nope that looks stupid let's not do that should we should we put my hair in the back i feel like we should <gasps> no can we take a second to appreciate that the ghosts the ghosts are reading akatar hi guys welcome or welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new hi hello my name is katie and you have stumbled upon one of my book hauls <laughs> um if you're new here i do these every month because i acquire books every month because book buying and book reading are two separate hobbies that i engage in and one just is faster than the other um, so all of these books are books that I acquired in September by either buying them myself or having them gifted to me from Instagram. So we're going to get into it. It's not as much as it normally is. So like kudos to me, but these are some of like my most watched videos and they're some of my most like I watch videos. I love book hauls because they add to my never ending TBR and it's just a way of like finding books that I would maybe not have found otherwise. So we're going to get into it. I've got my handy dandy post-its for those of you who don't know. There was once a time when I would do these and not know what they were about and just guess by like the title. <laughs> um, but now I go through them and put post-its and now it's I have somewhat of a knowledge of what the books are about. So we're going to start with book one. Chasing the Wild by Elliot Rose. This book, even though I don't think it's dark, gives me dark vibes. I know it's age gap and it's ex-boyfriend's father, which are two of my favorite things. In books and in out of books. At this point, you know, maybe I'd have better luck. Um, but so that's all I really know about this one. I know it's cowboy. I'm pretty sure this is a cowboy small town. But all I really cared that it was an age gap and ex's dad. That's all I need to know. So I haven't read anything by Elliot Rose and I don't know if they've written a lot of books or if this is a debut, I'm not too sure. But the cover is what caught me at first and then the tropes got me second, so. Okay, <laughs> this next book was not something I bought. But this book is actually from my mother. Uh, she saw this somewhere, dollar store or something, and she goes, you know what, Katie, this, you need a nice, sweet, sweet, non-spicy sweet book and I was like oh lord what did she buy me so she got me a waterfront wedding by Lee Duncan this is from the Hallmark company publishing company and read the synopsis it sounds like a Hallmark movie so basically our hero and our heroine are enemies because they both have rival wedding companies and they are in a competition because a Marine and his fiance are set to get married in this town. And it's going to be written up in like a big wedding magazine. So they both are vying for the chance to ha have the wedding at their venue. But for some odd reason, they have to start working together. And then we know what happens. They're going to fall in love. So is this probably spicy? No, probably not. This is probably just like a little sweet contemporary but we can try it. I don't read a lot of non-spice. Scratch that. I don't read any non-spice. Unless it's a thriller. So we're gonna, we'll see. I mean, the cover's pretty. The cover's pretty. I'll give it that. She's pretty. It's just, you know, it's from my mom. So I gotta give it a shot. Okay. The next book I have is The Fabric of Our Souls by K.M. Moranova. So I saw this book on a few people's channels and I was getting one of two reactions. The first reaction was this was so bad I DNF'd I couldn't read it and two this was so good. So I wanted to know which which population am I? So this is about a girl who tries to unalive herself and wakes up in the hospital and her brother's like you need to go away. Like not like meanfully but you need to like go get help. <laughs> so she goes to this unorthodox rehabilitation center where she is roommates with this guy. And already I can tell you, working in the mental health field, that you are never put into a room with the opposite sex or the opposite gender in a rehab facility. That's just, you don't do that. So that's where this book is just like, don't care about ethics or anything. 
but I'm just gonna leave that go. I'm gonna let that go and I don't, that's all I really know. And I know it's dark and I know people have some problems with it. So we'll see if I'm one of those people or if I tend, you know, to like it. Okay, the next two books are from the Dream Harbor series. So we've got the first one, which is the Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore. And this screams fall. And I know everyone's saying that, but it does. Now I know this, this is giving Gilmore Girl vibes. I don't watch Gilmore Girls. Shocking? I know. Who? What? Um, I just, I've seen it once and once was enough. So, but I do love me some fall vibes. So that's why I got this. So basically this is about our heroine who inherits the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. And when she moves in, she meets the local farmer. I think his name is Logan. And he is a grump. He's upset because she is sunshine and she is wrecking his life, apparently. So they don't get along at first, but they're going to get along because this is a romance. So what did I put for? I put grumpy sunshine, small town, found family. And then the second book is the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore. So this one is set in the same, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Town. Duh. This is set in the same town, the same world. And this is about our heroine who owns a bookstore. And she finds a secret message in this book that kind of sets her on this path of a scavenger hunt. And she asks for the help of, I think, Noah, who's like a local fisherman. And he has had a crush on her forever. So he is more than happy to help her kind of figure out the mystery of this. So for this, the tropes are he falls first, opposites attract, small town, forced proximity. And I've actually heard people say like they like this one more than the first one. Could be wrong. Who knows? But I'm just, I'm, I, I, need, I needed the fall vibes. I needed the fall vibes and I got the fall vibes. And there's a Christmas book coming out this week and it looks so cute and I need it. Will she be getting it? Yes, yeah, she will. Don't even ask. Don't even ask. Okay. The next book we've got is, this was a recommendation by, um, from Busty, Busty. <laughs> this was a recommendation from Bestie Book Reviews. And so from there, I got Anti Stepbrother by Tijan. I think that's how you say it. So from from reading the little synopsis, you know, I get that she is going to college and does she have a thing for her stepbrother at first? Apparently she does. And then she meets his frat brother who is really arrogant, really alpha, really like mean to her, but like for some reason she's drawn to that, you know? And he, that's hence why it's called the anti-stepbrother because at first she wants the stepbrother, then she wants the anti-stepbrother. But basically, really the reason you buy this book is for him, like on the cover. That's why, that's why you buy it. So they really enjoy this book. So, and I take their recommendation seriously because they never, they, they never steered me wrong yet. That's why I went ahead and got this book. I will leave their channel linked down below if you're interested because they are always just pumping out new recommendation videos left and right. Okay, the next book that I bought, I did buy this one myself, was Royally Screwed by Emma Chase. This is book one in the royalty series. I don't know how many there are, but at least five, six, six, seven, something around there. But we are following Nicholas and he is the crown prince of some, I say prince. Did I just say crown prince? I don't know, but he's the crown prince of some country and he meets this girl and he's used to like girls, you know, throwing themselves at him because like royalty, you know, but this girl's not having it. She actually like throws a pie in his face. I think she's a waitress and like she just gets upset, throws a pie in his face and he's smitten. He's a smitten kitten and he wants to get to know her. And so they do, but of course, with that comes all the, the hassle of being royalty and like the family. And I think there was like a disappointed grandma, um, a crazy spare heir, the paparazzi, all these people that are like plotting against them. So I don't know. I like royalty books. We're going to see. The next book is The Lumberjack by Susan Stoker. This is book four, book four. 
yes, book four in her Game of Chance series. So in this, we are following our hero who is an ex-soldier and he's been through a lot. He came out of the army and he started like a lumberjack business with his friends. And he has a receptionist who works there who she loves him. Like she is fully loves him, but just won't say anything. He likes her, but he won't say anything just because of his past and like people that he's loved, he's lost, so he doesn't say anything. However, she gets into a car wreck and loses her memory. So now he is going to take care of her, but also they're like starting from scratch because she does not remember who he is. So if you like amnesia, this is one for you. I have not read amnesia. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see if I like it. But I liked I liked the cover again. I think I own two out of the four books of this series now. Have I read them? That's a stupid question. That is a stupid question. But this is also romantic suspense because someone from his past is like coming after her, I think, to get to him. So that's why he has to protect her. Yeah, look, don't ask me if I read the books I buy. That's 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 a stupid question. Okay, the next book that I bought for myself was Heart of Frost and Scars. This is book three in the Frozen Fate series by Pam Godwin. I'm not saying what this book is about because I don't know because I've yet to read book two. I have read book one, which is Hills of Shivers and Shadows. Loved it. Check your triggers. She's a dark one. She's oh, probably the darkest book I've read. They probably, but I loved it. So this is book three. And I just, I don't know what's, I don't even want to read the back because it's going to spoil me. So I'm just putting it down, but just know that I have it and it will get read. Okay, the next book is The Wrong Heart by Jennifer Hartman. I'm not a fan of this cover. I do prefer the indie cover, but what can you do? What can you do? They're not available anymore. So in this book, we are following our heroine and her husband has passed and he was an organ donor. So he donated his heart. Now, she doesn't know who has it, um, but she would like to get into contact with the recipient of that. And she doesn't want to, any names or anything. She just wants a conversation. And then that conversation turns out to be more, I guess. That's all I really know. I don't know if, like, she falls in love with the person who has his heart or, or what. I don't know, but I know it's angsty. I know it's angsty, and I know it's probably going to tear my heart. And I love books like that. So we're just going to go in and see how I like it. The next one is Queen Move by, or is it Moves? No, just Queen Move by Kennedy Ryan. Book three in all the King's Men series. I don't know if it's following the same people or if it's just a different, in the set in the same world, but different people. Um, this is Legacy, Power, Passion. So for this one, this is Childhood Best Friends. And I don't know if they like grow up and... Like they have rival companies or something and i don't know if it's mafia or just like business like you know ceos billionaires things like that don't really know but i wanted this book because i had the other ones there's a, there's really no rhyme or reason for sometimes why i put books on my wish list but i'm like i have the others i need this as well it's just how it is okay from there we've got wild eyes by elsie silver book two in rose hill series this one, we are following a country singer and she moves to the small town to kind of get away from everything. Her, everyone in her life is very controlling. And I've been hearing people like compare her to Britney Spears, but I don't think she has a conservative ship. I just think people are very controlling. So she moves to this small town where there is this guy who has a record company, which I think is the hero from book one. And when she's there, she meets this hero for this book. And he is a single dad. And they're going to fall in love because that's just how it is. So I think every one of these books is a single dad, by the way. And apparently they have a bowling league. All the dads get together. Sounds so cute. That doesn't really happen in small towns. It's not my small town. But I wish. I wish there was a single dad's bowling league. Because I would be there to cheer them on. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, the next book, no, I'll do that one with the thrillers because it's kind of a thriller. Okay, the last romance book is In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yaros. So this one's a little complicated. So she gets on a plane 
and she meets like her seatmate, you know, and they hit it off really quick. And I guess they talk a lot before the plane starts. And then the plane goes and then 90 seconds later, it wrecks, it goes down. And they've had this connection and then they kind of go their separate ways and then they keep meeting. They, they keep having these like chance encounters as the years go on until he is in the military, I want to say, in Afghanistan. And she is there for some reason and he has to protect her. Is that what I put on my paper? High stakes reunion in Afghanistan. He must protect her. So I don't know why why he has to don't know don't know what she is don't know who she is but I I know a lot of people like Rebecca Yaros I you know definitely with fourth wing and everything but I just it sounded good so I was like add it to the wish list so I did and then the last well that's not true my last three books I thought were thrillers but one is a romance so we'll start with that one so book of the month for September I bought um, well, I got a thriller and then I added on a romance because I already had this book and I've already hauled it before, but something happened and it got ruined. So I just had to buy another copy, which, so it's, uh, just for the summer by Abby Jimenez. Uh, my first copy got wet. <clears throat> so I had to get a new one. And so basically you all know, you know what this is. I don't have to tell you, but they, she believes she's cursed because every time she dates someone and they break up, they find the love of their life. And then she's on Reddit one day and comes across a post from a man who says the exact same thing, that every time he falls in love with someone, they break up and then she finds the love of, their, of her life. So they're like, hey, let's date and then we can cancel each other's curses out and then we'll be good to go. But we know what's not good to go, they're gonna fall in love. That's what's not good to go. Mm. This was like the book of the summer. Everyone's read it. I don't know why I'm telling you guys, you've already read it. Okay, the last two books are my thrillers. So if you don't want to see these two, thanks for watching. But if you do, okay. The first one is a YA thriller, actually, because I am not opposed to reading YA thrillers. I find them fast-paced, interesting, a, like a nice palate cleanser, so to speak. So I have The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. All I know from this is this is a series, and it is YA Criminal Minds. Now, if you don't know, I know this is so basic. Everyone's like, I love Criminal Minds. Oh my gosh, Spencer Reed. Oh my gosh, Spencer Reed. Look, I I love Criminal Minds. <laughs> I just want to be basic too, okay? And like Spencer Reed, yes. Spencer Reed is a, he, like, he is a top tier character for me. But there is something about Derek Morgan. Ma'am. That man is some nice milk chocolate. I don't care. I don't care. <sighs> hmm. I mean, but Spencer Reed is like a close second, okay? But the, there's something about Derek Morgan. <laughs> there's something about Derek Morgan. I'm just saying. But so, <laughs> I don't know where I got off. I, I got off topic thinking about Derek Morgan. Okay. But this is basically YA Criminal Minds. They're, they work for the Behavioral Health Unit behavioral health. <laughs> no, that's the hospital. They work for the behavioral analysis unit and they kind of help at the FBI. They all have these special gifts that they're good at. So that's why I got it. And then the last book was the book of the month for September. So I got Sleep Tight by J.H. Markert. I don't know if this is a thriller or horror, but I read a horror this in, in just like a week ago. i pleasantly surprised. Wasn't too scary and I really enjoyed it. I don't know why it was considered a horror. It, to me, it was a thriller, but we're not going to talk about that. So, where's my little post-it? Post-it. Okay. So, this book is about a serial killer who, 20 years ago, went by the name of Father Silence. He posed as a priest, and that's how he would find his victims. And when they finally find his house of horrors, they find that he had murdered over 19 people, and there was a boy who survived living in the home. He is now set to be executed. They execute him, the killer. They execute the killer. And then the detective who was on the case back then dies the next day. So his daughter is now a detective as well, I do believe. And she is going to go back to the little boy who was found 20 years ago and ask what's going on. 
Like, he's gonna know. He might. Who knows? But that's kind of the premise of the story. I've heard good things. We're gonna give it a shot. It's very spooky. Will I read it in October? Probably not. Probably not. But it's here for next October or September or, or any any burr months. I feel like you can read spooky any burr months. That's just how it works. Okay, those are all the books for September. Would you like to know if I already have a pile started for October? I do. I do. It's only the what? The 12th? But I do. Don't judge me. It's fine. But if you read any of these books, please let me know down below which one should I prioritize or just let me know if you enjoyed any of these. Or if you want to leave me an emoji to let me know that you were here, leave me the house emoji because the last book had a house. Not a very pretty house, but a house nonetheless. If you are new here and enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new. I would love for you to stick around. My social media is linked down below as well, my Goodreads and my Instagram. Um, and coming up next week, I asked you guys on my community tab if you wanted me to split up the 40 romances that are on my radar <laughs> that I have listed or if you wanted them in all one video. And gosh darn it, you all want them in one video. So... I guess that's what I'm doing. I'm going to talk about the 40 romance books that are currently on my radar that are like new releases that I haven't heard too many talk about. Oh, 40. You all asked for it, so you all are going to watch it, okay? You're going to be nice and you're going to watch it all? Yep, okay. <laughs> well, I hope you guys are having a great day or evening and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.